The uh, last skills test that y'all turned in, I have from everyone but one person. Okay, so I w went ahead and wrote down the answers for you right here. 289, 725, 7 and 5 tenths, 82 hundredths, 7 and 21 hundredths, 2 and 54 hundredths, 2 and 8 tenths, 5 and 3 tenths, 3 and 9 tenths, 1 and 41 hundredths, 7 and 55 hundredths, 3 and 32 hundredths, 6 square root of 3, 4 square root of 7, 9 square root of 3, and 14 square root of 2. I'd like you to grade your own paper. By the way, I have graded everyone who turned it in, and they are uh, posted on the web page, on the grade links, sorry. Uh, and the grades for some of you were very good, and the grades for some of you were not. Okay, as a matter of fact, the class was about split in half. About half the class got an A or a B, including five people who got an A, 300s and 294s. But then seven people got a D or a U, including, uh, I think it was two people who failed, one with a 58, no, I'm sorry, three people failed, one with a 64, one with a 58, and one with a 28. Now again, some of you understand real well and some of you don't. The good news is for the people who did poorly, because I'm not around to answer your questions and help you during school time, Okay, anyone who does their corrections correctly can change their grade to 100, including the 58 and the 28. So it's very important that you do your corrections. By the way, right now I'm gonna go over one of each kind, starting with just using the algorithm to find the square root of a large number, then using the algorithm to find the square root of a decimal, then using the algorithm to round the quotient for a non-perfect square, and then writing in simple triangle form for a non-perfect square. Now again, uh, I'm only gonna do one of each. If you need help on any others, if you send me a uh, email at requesting for it, I will either make another video with the ones you request or I'll do that particular problem for you and send you a copy of it so you'll know and see how to do it. Anyway, I'm going to start by using some problems that uh, James Weimer asked about. There were ones that his, he uh, emailed me that he did not understand how to do. So starting with number one, I guess that's a good place to start. It says to find the square root of 83,521. And again, the way you do this is with the algorithm. And since James couldn't do it, I would imagine what happened is he couldn't get a remainder of zero, so he knew he was wrong. So I mark off every two places from the decimal. That's the first step of the algorithm. I look at the front mark off, which is eight, and say what number squared is closest to eight without going over, that would be two. I square two is four, and I subtract and get a remainder of four. Now again, that's the first thing you always do, is mark off every two places from the decimal, look at the front mark off, ask what number squared is closest to that number without going over, then putting that number and squaring it, subtracting. Now here comes the three steps that usually confuse people. Drop your next mark off, which is 35, double the answer at the top, which is four, and leave a blank behind it, because it's not gonna be four, it's gonna be 40 something. Divide four into 43 goes 10 times, but the biggest thing I could use is nine. Put a nine here and a nine there. Nine times nine is 81, carry your eight. Nine times four is 36 and eight is 44. And did I guess too big? Yes, I did. So I erase it. Okay, and I erase the nine here, but I also erase the nine here. And I replace the nine with an eight, but I replace the nine with an eight. Eight times eight is 64, carry your six. Eight times four is 32 and six is 38. Did I guess too big? No, I can subtract. And when I subtract, 
I get 5 minus 4 is 1. Borrow from the 4 and make it a 3. 13 minus 8 is 5. Now, I understand why James had trouble with this problem. Because this is one of those situations I told you happens every now and then, not very often, but it did happen here. 9 was too big, 8's too small, because 51 is bigger than 48. And James was probably said, well, what do I do? Well, whenever you have a situation where one of them's too big and the other one's too small, go with the one that's too small, because at least you can subtract and continue the process. Now I bring down the 21. Double 28 is 56 with a blank. 5 goes into 51. It goes, excuse me, 10 times, but the biggest thing I can use is 9. A 9 here and a 9 here. 9 times 9 is 81, carry your 8. 9 times 6 is 54, and 8 is 62, carry your 6. 9 times 5 is 45, and 6 is 51. And sure enough, I get a remainder of zero. And again, when, it, when it's the square root of a perfect square, if you don't get a remainder of zero, then you know you did something wrong. And you go, well, how do I know it was a perfect square? If I don't tell you to round, or if I don't tell you to write in short word form, short, shortest radical form, then, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a perfect square, and it needs a remainder of zero. And I bet you the problem was one of them was too big and the other one was too small, and you got confused with which way to do it. Now, the second one would be problem number six, and it was the square root of a decimal. Six and four thousand five hundred sixteen ten thousands. And again, you use the algorithm. Mark off every two places from the decimal. That's only one place in the front, two places, and two places in the back. By the way, the one thing you don't want to do is forget to bring the decimal up. One of the people who got a D would have had an A if they would have brought the decimal point up, but they forgot to bring the decimal point up every time. And again, don't forget the decimal. So now that I have every two places marked off from the decimal point and I brought the decimal up, I just start by taking the first mark off, which is six. What number squared is closest to six without going over? It's two. 2 squared is 4. Did I guess too big? No. I can subtract remainder 2. Drop down to 45. Double the 2 is 4. And divide 4 into 24 goes exactly 6 times. So a better guess would most probably be 5. 5 here and a 5 here. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry your 2. 5 times 4 is 20, and 2 is 22. I didn't guess too big. I can subtract 5 minus 5 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2. So now I repeat the process. Bring down the next mark off. Double 25 is 50 with a blank space. Divide 5 into 20 goes 4 times exactly. So you might think you need to use a 3, but the truth is you need to use a 4. And you go, well, what? I think if it went exactly, you'd have to go down one. You would with the carryover normally, but there's no carryover. By the way, the other reason I know it's going to have to be four is because I know it's going to have to have a remainder of zero because it's a perfect square. So it's going to have to have a six back here. And doesn't four times four equal 16? Four times four is 16, carry your one. Four times zero is zero, and one is one and four times five is 20. And sure enough, I get a remainder of zero. So again, the first one was just using the algorithm. The second one was using the algorithm with a decimal that you bring up into the answer, but it's still just using the algorithm. Now, the last one that James asked about was number seven. All right, and <clears throat> number seven says the square root of eight and it asks you to round to the nearest tenth. By the way, to round to the nearest tenth, you have to go to the hundredths, which means I'm going to add a decimal and four zeros. And you go, four zeros? That would be ten thousandths. No, remember the rule you mark off every two places? 
So those two places would give me the tenths, those two places would give me the hundredths. By the way, the people who messed up rounding decimals, almost every single one of them who messed up rounding decimals only went to the tenths. You don't round to the tenths by going to the tenths. You round to the tenths by going to the hundredths. And then if the number in the hundredths place is a five or above, you raise the tenths place up one. Anyway, now I bring my decimal point straight up and I follow the algorithm. What number squared is closest to eight without going over? Two. Square two is four. I didn't guess too big, I can subtract. Now I do my process, bring down the next mark off. Double two is four. And again, four into 40 goes a total of 10 times. Uh, you could try a nine. Nine times nine is 81, carry your eight. Nine times four is 36 and eight is 44. Guess too big. So erase the nine here, here, and here, and try an eight. Eight times eight is 64, carry your six. Eight times four is 32 and six is 38. I didn't guess too big, I can subtract now if I borrow, and I get a remainder. 10 minus four is six, nine minus eight is one. Now I can drop the next two zeros. Double 28 is 56. Divide five into 16 goes three times. Three times three is nine. Three times six is 18, carry your one. Three times five is 15 and one is 16. And I guess too big. But the truth is I don't even have to erase and try again. And you go, what are you talking about? If you guess too big, you gotta go smaller. Yeah, but I don't need to know what this number was. I just needed to know, was it five or above or four or below? Since three was too big, that means it's four or below. And since this is below five, the eight stays the same. Everything else stays the same. And that's your answer. By the way, all of you who were messing up rounding might have got this one right. Because, the, like I said, the people who were messing up rounding would stop at the tenths and not go to the hundredths. Uh, by the way, that happened in a couple of places. It happened right here. People gave me an answer of three and eight tenths. But if you went to the hundredths place, you would have to round up and it's three and nine tenths. It happened here too. People gave me an answer of seven and 54 hundredths. That's because they stopped at the hundredths place when they were rounding the hundredths place. If you go to the thousands place, you have to go up one and it's seven and 55 hundredths. And some people on this one gave me three and 31 hundredths. That's because they stopped at the hundredths place. You got to go up one and then you would got to go over one more place and then you would round up one and make it 32 hundredths. So again, some of you who did got D's would have got A's or B's if you would have rounded it to the tenths instead of going to the tenths. And if you would have rounded it to the hundredths instead of going to the hundredths. So again, remember, to round, you go one more place than what you're rounding. Now, finally, those were the ones that James asked about. But James didn't ask about any of the ones that dealt with, excuse me, simple spherical form. So I'll just pick one of those right now to do for you. Uh, let's look at problem number 13, I guess the very first one, the square root of 108. Now again, if I want the square root of 108, what I need to do is find a perfect square that goes into 108. Now, one way to do that is to think about your perfect square roots. One, four, nine, 16, 25, okay, and so forth. And you could check these until you can make sure that none of them go. It turns out that the one that goes is nine. And how do I know nine goes? Because the sum of the digits is nine and nine goes into nine. So you could actually break this down into the square root of nine times 12. All right? And it's, <clears throat> excuse me. The thing is though, there's a perfect square that goes into 12. What's the perfect square that goes into 12? Four. So I could break this down in the square root of nine times four times three. 
and that would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. By the way, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 3 is uh, irrational. So this comes out to be 6 square root of 3. By the way, some of you left it like this. Okay, you should write it like that. By the way, I didn't take off, but some of you wrote the dot, but you couldn't get a dot in the middle, so you wrote a dot at the bottom. That makes it a decimal, and that's not correct. But I knew what you were trying to do, so I didn't mark it wrong. But someone even used a time sign. No time signs in algebra. And you go, well, this isn't algebra. I go, it most definitely is. That's where you're going to deal with this in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2. So you don't use time signs ever. And to be honest with you, you usually don't even use a dot. By the way, this is one way you could have done this problem, but it's not the way I would recommend you do if you have trouble. What I would do if I were you is I'd break it down into its prime factorization, which you could do it in many ways. You could use 9 times 12, and you can make 9 3 times 3. You can make 12 4 times 3. And then you can bring down a 3, bring down a 3, make 4 2 times 2, and bring down a 3. So that's the prime factorization. So now, for every pair of numbers, you take one out. You have a pair of 3s, you take a 3 out. You have a pair of 2s, you take a 2 out. You don't have anything else in pairs, so you keep the 3 under. 3 times 2 is 6, square root of 3. And that's how you get the answer. I think this is the easiest way to get it, unless you know times tables really good. By the way, the truth is, what they would have wanted you to do here is not use 9, <coughs> excuse me, or use 4. They would have wanted you to use 36, because the truth is, 108 is really 36 times 4. No, it's not. Sorry. 36 times 3. And by the way, the square root of 36 times the square root of 3, the square root of 36 is 6 square root of 3. Now, that's what they would think you would know, but I don't know too many people that would know 36 goes on 108. So I wouldn't do it that way. I would do it this way. Now, that gives you what the right answers are supposed to be, and it gives you an example of each type. Uh, I'm gonna put, send the answer key out to you so you can grade it there if you can't see this well enough. And if you have any more that you have trouble with, especially if you're one of the people who failed or got a D, you can uh, email me what it is that you're having trouble with, and I'll make either another video if there's a lot of them, or else I'll make a, answer worksheet for you if there's only one or two, all right? So it's very important that you know how to do all these things with square roots for what we're going to go on to next. So these are your answers.